I would like to thank the cigarreras or the female tobacco workers for leading me to my journey as a woman historian, as well as writing about the past of the Filipino woman. To them, I owe a turning point in my personal life, as well as my career as a historian. Allow me to explain why. When I was writing my dissertation for a doctorate degree in France, I had the opportunity to go to Spain one summer to do research about my dissertation topic, which was on the urban development of Manila in the 19th century. I discovered that the sources for my topic were not in Seville or Sevilla, but in Madrid. One beautiful day while I was going over the ligajos or bundles on Fomento at the Archivo Histórico Nacional, I stumbled on a document entitled Alboroto de Cigarreras de Manila. The recorder of the incident being male downplayed a strike or a huelga staged by the female tobacco workers of Manila. The use of the word alboroto, which means a minor disturbance, or better yet a tantrum, was used to describe the absence of the cigarreras in their workplace. This choice of word underscored that staging a strike is a monopoly of the male and not the female. Since the cigarreras were women, their boycott to work was dismissed was as a simple disturbance. I was pleasantly surprised by this bold act of women. We know for a fact that the tobacco monopoly was a successful economic venture of the Spaniards in the Philippines. This monopoly employed women since the Spanish authorities found them to be more adept than men in rolling cigars, aside from being innately honest. The cigarera was less prone to smuggling cigars out of the fabrica or the tobacco factory. She was a contrast to the men who manufactured the cigarillo or cigarette and who showed a propensity of smuggling out cigarettes from the factory ingeniously hiding them in their pants and hats, not the cigarera. At that time, Maria Clara in Rizal's Nolime Tangere was my notion of women in the 19th century. Maria Clara was a woman who was timid, coy, and obedient. With that in mind, the striking cigarera showed some spunk. From, for me, this discovery provided a refreshing detail about the Filipino of yore. Upon my return in the Philippines after obtaining a doctorate de troisième sec from the Ecole de Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales in Paris, I was interested in knowing more about the cigarreras. I spent an entire summer at the National Archives in TM Calau in my desire to uncover the cigarreras. Looking for them meant plodding through the ligajos or bundles labeled tobacco and zeroing in on Tobacco Manila as the factories were found in Manila. I recalled then that one could request only three bundles a day. There were times when there was nary a mention of the cigarera in my daily quota of three ligajos. However, there were days when the cigarreras were figuratively jumping out from the cracks of the parchment curtain to borrow the words of William Henry Scott. Those days gave me a real high. I was simply ecstatic. The result of that summer spent in the National Archives was an article which I submitted to the Philippine Studies, a quarterly journal of Ateneo. Encouraged by the publication of the article on the cigarreras, I applied for a research grant from the Office of Research Coordination the forerunner of the present Office of Vice Chancellor for Research Dissemination, or OVCRD, to work on women, working women of Manila in the 19th century. This time, I returned to the Philippine National Archives to go over the ligajos or bundles which featured women. This meant going over the bundles on the criadas or servidumbres domesticas, or domestic servants, the mestras, the teachers, matronas titulares, licensed midwives, and mujeres publicas or prostitutas or prostitutes. 
The final report to this research became a book which was published jointly by the UP Press and the University Center for Women's Studies in 1995. Included in this book was my article on the cigarreras. This book won the 1995 National Book Award in the category of history. This book came after my Kasaysayan Panlipunan ng Maynila, which won the 1993 National Book Award in the category of history. The success of this book led me to apply again for a research grant to work on the biography of Incarnacion Alsona, the first Filipino woman historian. Funding for this research again came from the Office of Research Coordination. I had this fascination in writing the biography of Incarnacion Alsona, who happens to be my idol. At that time, Alsona had been a recluse and shunned being interviewed. I was confronted with the problem of having access to her. The key person to meeting her was my professor in the course of the 19th century Philippines, in the course 19th century Philippines, Dr. Serafine Kiason. The mother of Dr. Kiason happened to be a good friend of Dr. Alsona. Dr. Kiason gave me a letter of introduction. And in one, uh, at once, in one Saturday afternoon, I sought out Dr. Alsona in her elegant home along Taft Avenue. From then on, I paid her a visit every Saturday. Dr. Alsona was always garbed in barot saya and served me refreshments from days of yore, such as minatamis na kundol. I would be transported to another world by her garb and the merienda she served. This would be the beginning of my subsequent Saturday afternoon visits to Dr. Alsona. I told Dr. Alsona that I would like to write her biography, but she demurred since she said she was still alive. Dr. Alsona suggested instead that I do an anthology of her works, which I did. Collecting her many writings, which came in the form of books, monographs, translations, speeches, and essays, made me realize how prolific she was. We present generation owe to Dr. Alsona the many English translations of Rizaliana, like the Rizal Blumentritt Correspondence, Rizal's Correspondence with Fellow Reformists, as well as the works of Marcelo H. Del Pilar, La Soberania Bonacal, uh, Gregorio Sanchancos, Progreso de Filipinas, and Rafael Diaz Arenas, Memoria Sobre Comercio. These are just some of her translation. Perusing her, through her works, body of works, the words historian, feminist, and recentist aptly, des aptly describes her persona. The book, Incarnation Alsona, an anthology, was published in 1996 by the Office of Research Coordination of UP. The writing of women's history, according to Gerda Lerner, in her work, The Majority Finds it, Its Past, says that the first stage of recuperating women's past is writing the history of women worthies or exceptional women. From my end, I was encouraged to write about the first female pensionadas sent to the United States in 1904. Out of the 39 pensionados sent in 1904, there were five. These women were Honoria Acosta and Luisa Season of Pangasinan, Elizabeth Florendo and Eleanor de Leon of Ilocos Sur, and Genoveva Llamas of Laguna. The following year, 1905, three women out of 37 pensionados were sent to the US. They were Clemente Asturias of Romblon, Pilar Elumba of Surigao, and Olivia Salamanca of Cavite. This essay of mine entitled Women Pensionadas purveyors of modernization amongst Filipino women came out in the Diliman Review in 1997. I was struck with how these women turned out to be nationalists, especially when I saw how Dr. Honoria Acosta would uh, churn out scientific papers about childbirth and women's diseases in the Philippines, or how Olivia Salamanca intimated in her diary how critical she was of the Americans in the Philippines. With the celebration of the centennial of Philippine independence, the Philippine American Foundation 
came out with the book, Filipina First, a salute to 100 women pioneers, 1898 to 1991, 98, which was a compendium of women who broke the glass ceiling by entering and excelling in male dominated professions in the country. I was lead researcher in this project and it was a big challenge to identify the first Filipino uh, Congresswoman who happens to be Elisa Sanchez Ochoa, the first Filipino woman senator who happens to be Geronima Pexon, the first Filipino woman doctor who happens to be Honoria Acosta Season, the first Filipino woman lawyer who happens to be Maria del Pilar Francisco Villa Seren, uh, the first Filipino woman veterinarian happens to be Teofila Aquino Versovia, the first Filipino engineer, uh, Leonora Paraan San Agustin, etc. I had to write capsule biographies of each of these women pioneers. The book came out in 2002. Equally part of women, women's worthies was a chapter I wrote on Salud Al Gabre as part of the book, Women in Southeast Asian Nationalist Movements, edited by Susan Blackburn and Heli Ting and published by the NUS Press in 2013. Salud Al Gabre was a member of the Sakdal movement. It was interesting to read the press releases about her when she took part in raiding the Municipal Hall of Santa Rosa, her arrest and eventual trial. The most recent piece on women of mine is a chapter on the history of leprosy in the Philippines. My chapter on the women of Culion made me realize that leprosy has a gender dimension. The experience of women with this disease is different from those of men because of their reproductive capacity. A woman afflicted with leprosy has to contend with being pregnant and nursing a child. My interviews with these women allowed me to enter the female experience with this disease. They, their sad stories and personal triumphs were worth listening to, but sometimes it gets so depressing, I, I get moved by their stories. Now, uh, let me go to uh, how um, women's history has been in the Philippines. Now, the writing of women's history in the country may be traced to the demand for the right to vote by the Filipinas. Women's suffrage was a result of women getting an enlightened education and demanding political rights enjoyed by men. In the Philippines, two suffragettes, American Mrs. Carrie Chapman and the Dutch Dr. Aleta Jacobs visited the Philippines in 1912 to convince Filipino women to campaign for women's suffrage. The Filipinos, Filipinas whom they met felt that they were not yet ready for, uh, to demand for the right to vote and chose instead to undertake welfare projects like establishing the Gota de Leche. It took Dr. Paz Mendoza Guazon, who founded the Philippine Association of University Women in 1928 to make women's suffrage as the flagship project. Dr. Guazon was the first Filipino woman who finished medicine in 1912 at the College of Medicine and Surgery of UP. As part of the campaign for women's suffrage, she wrote the book, Development and Progress of the Philippine Women in 1928. This was followed four years later by Dr. Encarnacion Alzona's work, The Filipino Woman, Her Social, Economic and Political Status, 1565 to 1954 and she published it in 1934. So we see here the historian bent already because she is very specific uh, in terms of delimiting her work to social, economic, political, and also her delimitation in terms of period or date. Both works provided arguments why women should be given the right to vote. 
vote. Both works provided proofs of the great strides the Filipina has made in her personal and professional life. The Filipinas were finally given the right to vote when in a plebiscite held on April 30, 1937, 447,725 women answered yes to the question, are you in favor of granting suffrage to women? The number of yes votes surpassed the quota of 300,000 affirmative votes set by the law. After this date, the documentation of the history of women was set aside with the dominance of political history. In the case of history writing in the Philippines, the dominant theme was nation building. There would be an emergence of works on Philippine history in general and the Philippine Revolution in particular. In, this, in the wake of this kind of history, women were marginalized. It is enough to take a look at the index of works in Philippine history as proof of this fact. The mention of the Babaylan or Catalona in pre-Hispanic Philippines and the women's chapter of the Katipunan are just the few occasions when women are discussed. After these two topics, women are absent in the historical narrative. Political history has a tendency to consign women in the margins. Dr. Encarnacion Alsona continued her interest on women's history. She wrote biographies of some known Filipinas like Maria Paz Mendoza Guason, published in 1967, and Librada Avellino, published in 1974. She, she also wrote about the diary of Olivia Salamanca in 1981 when she was already a national scientist. The emergence of social history and the United Nations Declaration of the Decade of Women gave a renewed interest on women's history in the Philippines. Women's history experienced a renaissance with the emergence of social history. Political, diplomatic, and economic history has been the domain of the male as they were basically the actors in this field. Social history privileged the marginalized sectors of society and one of, of them would be women aside from the poor, the sick, and the criminals. My interest in social history was piqued not only by the cigarreras who were absent in the pages of history, but also the so-called called outcasts of society, such as prostitutes and the insane. This may be right articles such as prostitution in 19th century Manila and the Hospicio de San Jose, institutional care for mental patients, both published in the Philippine Studies. The sources I used were archival, consulting the bundles, particularly of prostitutas and dementes. The decade of the 80s witnessed the setting up of women's, student, uh, women's Studies Center attached to academic institutions. The institution of uh, uh, introductory women's courses and the writing of materials on women in the Philippines. Saint Scholastica College under the indefatigable Sister Mary John Manansan established a Women's Studies Institute while the UP established the Center for Women's Studies, both established in 1998. During the centennial celebration of the Philippine Revolution and the Declaration of the Philippine Independence, conferences were organized. There was a conscious effort to include women among the themes of the conference. In March 9 to 10, 1989, in celebration of the International Women's Week, the University Center for Women's Studies of UP held a conference on the role of women in Philippine history. Selected papers in the aforementioned conference were published by the University Center for Women's Studies of UP in 1986. It was also in this occasion that I wrote an article on women in the Philippine Revolution, which appeared in Kasarinlan, a Philippine quarterly of the Third World Studies of UP, as well as an article entitled Buhay Pampamilya Nung Panahon ng Revolusyon 
which was published as part of the proceedings of the Tatlong Pambansang Conferencia para sa Centenario ng Revolusyon 1896. I would recall particularly in writing uh, uh, this paper on Buhay Pampamilya, I consulted the Philippine Revolutionary Papers and I saw a marginal note because this was a bundle of letters of a wife to a husband who was fighting the war front. The one who was, I, I don't know if it was Taylor, uh, he said there was a marginal note, not important. So uh, in other words, in the revolution at that time, it was not important. No, but for me, I, when I took a look at it, I said, this is important because it's an attempt for normalcy no? in a time of revolution. But look at the mail, they said, not important. Okay, looking back, uh, uh, these two incidents of the Welga and this document about not important in the Philippine Revolutionary Papers, I think um, were turning points for me as a historian. The um, uh, revision of the undergraduate program in history of the Department of History in UP uh, instituted the two important subjects, which are, I feel very important uh, areas. And this was uh, social history of the Philippines. It's uh, Kasaysayan 117 or 117. And uh, History of Women in the Philippines, Kasaysayan 118. Both courses I continue to teach and had a hand in doing the syllabus and crafting the syllabus of these two courses. Interest uh, in women's history has likewise been seen in the production of scholarly works as they now form uh, a body of knowledge on women. Now we see the work of Professor Bernadette Abrera on the Binukot or the dissertation of Professor Judy Tagiwalo on working women of Manila during the American period or Nancy Gabriel's work on the women of Tondo. Recently defended was the work of Dorothy Jose on uh, images of women you know, during the American period. Now, how does women's history interface with public history? While there is a growing interest in the study of women in the academe, it's still a field rarely ventured in, to, uh, in public history. If the marginalization of women in written history is slowly being addressed, sadly, in public history, uh, it is not so. Um, in a national conference sponsored by the Philippine Historical Association, I read a paper entitled Looking for Women in the Streets of Manila. I was not referring to here the streetwalkers or the prostitutes, but I was curious only about knowing or finding out how many streets in Manila were named after women. I discovered that in Manila, with its so many streets, there were just about 17 streets named after women. Uh, for instance, in the northern bank of the Pasig River, one finds a street named after Tudor Alonso in Santa Cruz, Madre Ignacia Street in Tondo, Narcisa Rizal Street, and Trinidad Rizal Street in um, Sisters of Jose Rizal in Tondo, Leonor Rivera Street, in San Paolo and Tandang Sora Street in Santa Cruz. South of the Pasig River, one finds streets named after Natividad Almeda Lopez, who is the first Filipino Associate Justice of the Court of Appeals in Ermita, a street named after Librada Avilino, one of the founders of Centro Escolar de Senoritas in Pandacan a street named after Jose Falianis Escoda, the person who, who brought the Philippine uh, Girl Scout movement here in the country and a martyr during the Japanese occupation in Ermita. A street named after Paz Mendoza Guazon, a suffragette and president of the Philippine Association of University Women in Paco. A street named after Pilar Hidalgo Lim, 
another suffragette in Malate. A street named after Maria Rosa, a famous home economist and uh, martyr of the Japanese occupation in Ermita and a street named after Ingracia Reyes, founder of Aristocrat res Restaurant in Ermita. One can include that women who figured in the Spanish period had streets named after them in the northern or older part of the city or uh, northern part of the Pasig River. Uh, the exception here is a street named after Carmen Planas, the first woman councillor of Manila during the Commonwealth period. A street is named after her and is found in San Nicolas, Manila. Women who were suffragettes and were active during the American period had streets named after them in the southern part of the Pasig River, uh, an area which was developed during the American period. The situation shows how women remain marginal in public history. Uh, more streets, places, or public squares, like stations, await being named after women. To date, there is a Betty Go Belmonte train station, but no street, place, or train station or plaza named after Gregoria de Jesus. Much work still has to be done in the Philippines for remembering and uh, uh, endearing women, uh, embracing women who are considered uh, by the Chinese as half of the sky and uh, majority, a majority of society by American feminist Gerdard Lenner. Thank you and good afternoon. Wow. Maraming salamat, uh, Dr. Kamagay, sa inyong napaka-gandang uh, lektura dahil ito ay mula sa puso ng inyong karanasan bilang isang uh, historian ng kababaihan Pilipino. At uh, syempre, uh, it's also a challenge kasi nabanggit nyo na public history in which uh, most of us are involved will still have to do a lot of work for uh, women. And uh, yung ganyang klaseng honesty, mga kaibigan, yan po ang kailangan natin sa ating asosasyon so that we can direct uh, more efforts on the things that we should still have to do. Now, uh, gusto ko pong kilalanin kasi may sinout out, may, may binanggit si ma'am mm -hmm. na unang babaeng doktor, si Honoraya Honoria. Honoraya. Acosta Season. Acosta Season. Oh. Yeah. Honoria, tama, no? Honoria. Yes. Oh, Honoria Acosta Season. Um, member natin siya ng PHA, si Danilo Acosta Lumabas. Nandito ba siya ngayon? Mm. Ay, hello po. Magandang hapon. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Ayan, o. Oh. Diba? So, nabanggit ni ma'am sa lecture ang iyong uh, uh, ninuno. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I shared this, ano, this uh, picture to Sir Balsamo kasi nabanggit po kasi si Honoria Acosta Season. She's from, Panga she's from Kalasyaw, uh, Kalasyaw, Pangasinan. Mm -hmm. Salamat po. Nice. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ano, ma'am, I don't, I, don't, I don't think you don't mind. No. Uh, I think no. you don't mind if there are questions. Maybe yeah, if I there are three questions that you want to ask uh, Dr. Kamagay now, Maybe this is the time. So, uh, magano lang kayo. Raise your hand lang or uh, uh, you can open your microphone. Okay. Uh, siguro, ako may... Ako okay. Kung walang ako. tanong, ako magtatanong. Ako, ako. Ako, oh, ako magtatanong ako. Uh, <laughs> Professor Jonathan Balsamo, the Secretary of the Association. Ako. Ma'am, uh, bago yung Uh, bago yung interest niyo sa women's history, di ba po sa ano yon sa, sa Spain. Pero mm -hmm. kung baga graduate student na kayo at that time. Mm -hmm. Pero bago yun, ma'am, um, ano yung interest ninyo? Uh, bago women? Oh, yes, Urban history? Yeah. Ah, kasi po yung, sa, yung kay Dr. Chiaso na paper. Oh, no? oh, yeah. I remember kasi my term paper in uh, the course was... Um, the Arabales de Manila. And uh, well, of course, um, I got a grade of one. So I was inspired. You know naman how, 
how uh, you get some affirmation when you get a grade of one in, <laughs> in a course. So uh, that encouraged me to uh, go into urban history. Uh, ako naman ay may tanong, uh, oh. Dr. Kamagay. But actually, na, it, you have to take note na di ba, working women of Manila, eh, parang urban history at women's history na pinagsama. Di ba? Yeah. Ang interest ninyo. Oh, Pero oh. itong tanong ko, meron pa ba kayong pangarap na kababaihan na hindi nyo pa naga, gusto nyong gawan ng uh, biography o pagtuunan ng pansin? Ngayon, parang ang naiisip ko, dahil nga tayo ay nag-link uh, out with our Southeast Asian uh, uh, neighbors, no? particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, I am curious about writing an article on the Hilot of the Philippines and the Dulo, uh, Dukot Bayi of um, Indonesia. Mga traditional healers rin sila. So uh, um, magandang i-compare uh, yung situation nung atin Hilot at saka yung kanilang counterpart Hilot during the colonial period because they were demonized by the Spaniards and the Dutch. So I want to take a look where that demonization is coming from. But parang off my head, ang parang demonization from the uh, Filipino Hilot is the inhuman way of delivering babies. Parang ganun eh, kasi yun yung ginamit na, na justification for the establishment of a school of midwifery. Sa akin, ang haka-haka ko, for the Dutch, they describe them as um, dirty, uh, old, mga ganong ba na, kasi we know the Dutch have a fetish for cleanliness. So when <laughs> they want to disparage and demonize, you're dirty. No? So sa kanilang pananaw, yun yung naging dahilan kung bakit naman nila negative ang image ng ng Dukon Bayi uh, sa Indonesia. I mean, that's one of the interests now that I have. Huh? I rekindled uh, something that I did also when I compared Imelda Marcos, hmm. uh, image of the Babaylan, kasi she, she assured, assumed that role eh, hmm. uh, in my reading and how Eva Peron was actually associated in Argentina as a curandera na sa Latin America, yun naman yung ating... Uh, Uh, katumbas ng faith healers, mm. uh, yung mga kurandera. No? Uh, mm. Anyway, so thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, for one more question before we go to the actual business meeting. Okay. If there is none... Meron pa ako siya. <laughs> okay. okay. Ito, ma'am. Secretary. Uh, ano lang po, um, sa umagamang writing ritual, yan. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah, maganda yan. Na pagsusulat niyo ma'am, um, <laughs> parang ano ba kayo nakaka uh, madaling araw ba kayo nagsusulat? Nakakailang revision po kayo or <laughs> sa pagsusulat ma'am? Alam mo yung discipline of writing I developed when I was writing my dissertation in France. Kasi uh, after uh, even in terms of yung time management, uh, in terms of research no. Uh, in the morning, I would spend my whole morning at the B Bibliotheque Nacional. Tapos, after lunch, I would spend naman the whole afternoon until early evening dun sa Archive de Dotromer or the Archives of the uh, Overseas uh, Ministry. No? Parang ganon. So, uh, uh, you have to have some discipline. Now, in writing, ganon rin. Nung natapos na ako mag-research, I would really sit in front of the typewriter. Wala pang computer. No, no, no. So talagang uupo ako sa harap ng typewriter and try to write the whole morning. Uh, so uh, yun dun ko yata, yun experience ko, kaya nga sabi ko yung buhay ko as a graduate student in France is really a separate chapter in my life kasi ang dami kong... Uh, natutunan, ang dami kong awakening, realizations, no? kasi nag-iisa ka. Uh, you do a lot of thinking, uh, renumerating, pero yun, yung skill of writing, you really have to discipline yourself. No? So, yun ang... Uh, and then, I stop when 
I know what I will write again the next time para hindi ka blankong blanko. Uh, Mag-stop na ako dito kasi sa susunod na upo ka sa harap ng, ng typewriter, ah, alam ko na kung ano ang aking isusulat. So, something like that. No? So, it's, uh, I think also one, one good secret of helping you write is reading. You should read uh, kahit na ano, hindi naman dapat history lang, kahit na ano. Pwedeng na magbasa kasi you get to develop a, a vocabulary and a writing style. No? Siguro si Ambet uh, will also, uh, he is also the best person to, to uh, ask because he, he keeps a, a column. No? And that's more uh, demanding uh, when you have to uh, submit uh, your column no? in a newspaper. Pero yun, discipline. Kailangan ng discipline. Oh, thank you very much, Mama, uh, for all the experiences that you shared. Uh, and I know that it would be an inspiration for all the members of the Philippine Historical Association, especially it was noted by our uh, uh, board member, uh, K. Bundang, that uh, there are so many young members of the association who are probably high school people, elementary people. When I first started to be in this association in uh, 2008-2009. So, uh, uh, we, napakabilis ng panahon. At ngayon, and uh, of course, cheers. Hanggang umabot tayo. This is our 60th, 65th year. Uh, Jonathan, tama, no? 65 years na tayo. And this is our 65th year. And on to, sandali na lang yan, our 100th year. Di ba? <laughs> Uh, as a as an association. <laughs> we owe it to people like Encarnacion Alsona, to people like Dean Gloria Santos, the women and the men who built this association. So thank you so much. Yan ang daladala natin. Thank you, Dr. Kamagay, Keeper of Our Flame in the Philippine Historical Association, and to all of us. Now, we are now proceed to the business meeting. I would now call for the Secretary's report and acknowledgement of new lifetime members, I would like to call the Secretary of the Association uh, and uh, uh, the head of the Culture and uh, Tourism Office of the City of Valenzuela, curator of the Museo Valenzuela, Mr. Jonathan Balsamo. I'll make you co-host. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Nakikita na siya. Hello. Okay. Nakikita po. Okay. Nakikita na. So good afternoon. So So I think we have a quorum. We have uh actually we had uh 100 uh, 200 registrants and then from uh from 200 registrants uh ang nagregister sa atin ngayon ay uh 80 85 bayan shaw. Inside the room, we are 82 Inside members. Ah, 82. Okay. If I fluctuate yan because sometimes people will be out because of internet disconnection. Okay. So I think ito, itong pinakamalaki nating attendance sa General Assembly kasi because usually <laughs> uh, nasa 30, 30 tayo. No? So 82 is a good number. Okay. So um, I would like to report um, that the board uh, of directors or board of trustees of the Philippine Historical Association uh Convi uh, conducted board meetings no um uh for three times uh one uh, face to face during the first quarter and two online two online via zoom and um in those board meetings um i think i i am going to mention i think the most important resolution uh, approved by the board which is the approval of the proposed um him of the Philippine Historical Association. So tayo ay 65th na, pero ngayon lang tayo nagkaroon ng uh, kumbaga officially him. 
So ito po yung nakikita ninyo sa screen ngayon. Ito po ay naman na publish, mapapa-publish sa ating PHA balita sa ating newsletter. Makaka-receive po kayo ng kopya sa inyong email. Mababasa po ninyo yung lyrics, no. Sa ngayon lyrics pa lang po, no, kasi hindi pa siya nagagawan ng um, um, hindi pa siya nagagawa ng musical rendering, no. Although meron na siyang music and and lyrics. So, we would like to acknowledge and thank um Ian Alfonso no sa po yung sumulat ng lyrics and uh, through Ian and through Ma'am Kamagay dahil kaibigan ng ating composer uh, na si national artist uh, Ryan Kayabyab so ang pamagat po ay mananalaysay ng bayan so abangan po ninyo next year um, kapag nagkaroon na po tayo ng enough fund para magkaroon ng full rendering um, ito pong um, hymn ng ng PHA um, pero kung maga sa atin po significant na during our 65th, no, we were able to um, come up with an official hymn of the, the Philippine Historical Association. And then, um, uh, as secretary of the association po, ako rin po yung head ng membership committee. At um, nakatutuwa po na sa taong ito, for 2020, ay nagkaroon po tayo ng 35 um, lifetime member uh, new lifetime members no so at uh, makikita po ninyo sa screen no so, so si Dr. Faina Olindang ng Iligan a uh, uh, former congressman Mario Aguha ng Mindanao State University Jensen uh, Sherin De Amboy PUP Santa Mesa Ronwell Bacani UI Caloocan yung iba po ay nandito sila sa atin sa Zoom so welcome to PHA from Gumaka Quezon Albert Bareto from UP Asian Center, Tala, Batangan. From Manila, Jason Bautista. Los Baños, Laguna, Jonathan Binlayo. Uh, Richard Bichara ng Manila. From Cebu, Christian Bonpua. Uh, of course, ang kinikilala rin ating historiadors no, sa kapalig uh, kasaysayang pangkapaligiran, no, si Dr. Uh, Rowi Bokiren. Um, from Cavite, Juan Gabriel Bravo. Uh, Jeremy Kalimpong. From Mindanao State University, Iligan, uh, Professor Archil Daug. From Quezon City University, Marcelino De Sena. From Baguio, Kurt Dizon. From PLM, Fritz Fadri. Pasig, Irene Gumiran. Uh, Nordita Hamito. Um, from Malaysia, um, Norizan Kadir. Uh, from Quezon City, um, Sir Hernando Melencio. Uh, si Sir Hernando po ang ating taga-layout ng ating bulletin at ng ating balita. Thank you, sir. From Quezon City, Jeremiah Montejo. From Cebu, Emmanuel Nadella. From Pasig, Henry Ong. From PUP Santa Mesa, Attorney Melchor Pelleja. Uh, Sherwin Ramosa. Um, from, uh, in, uh, from Malaysia, Rain Riman. From uh, Ateneo de Sambuanga, na nasa Malaysia rin ngayon, no? Dr. Feliz Noel Rodriguez. Uh, Kevin Philip Santos. Marlson Silvosa from Caloocan. From Cavite, Cristel Villanueva. Maria Ana Catherine Villamor from UP Diliman, Aimee Dizon and Gerald Dizon from UE University of the East Manila and UE Caloocan. So we would like to uh, thank uh, and welcome no, the new, mem new lifetime members of the Philippine Historical Association. Hindi ko na po isinama yung ating annual members kasi marami po sila mahigit isang daan. No? Pero by tradition po, we usually acknowledge our new lifetime members sa ating General Assembly or sa ating uh, uh, conferences. So, uh, yun lang po ang aking report. No? Back to you, Xiao. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, virtual clap sa'yo at sa lahat ng ating mga bagong kasapi ng Philippine Historical Association na kasama natin ngayong araw na ito. So ngayon naman po, we would like to call the treasurer of the association and faculty at the University of Santo Tomas, Dr. Arlene Calara. Ma'am Arlene? Magandang hapon. Do you need to be host? You want to be host? Ah, na po. Apa, sige po. Narinig na po ako? Yes. Okay, magandang hapon po. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year sa ating lahat. Hayaan niyo po akong ibahagi ano, ang ulat, yung yaman ng ating asosasyon. Noong uh, 2019 po, 
meron po tayong balancing 82,468.38. Pagpasok po ng 2020, yung ating pong income kasama po yung membership ay umabot ng 151,000. 1,262.50. Yung ating pong expenses para sa taong 2020 ay 53,001.9. Kaya po ang ating kabuang um, kayamanan, ano, yung ating income minus po yung ating expenses ay 180,000. 728.98. Um, kasalukuyan po ako at yung ating uh, assistant treasurer si Kay. Hi Kay. Um, isinumiti po namin yung mga resibo kasama po yung kopya ng uh, passbook para po sa verification ng ating accountant. Yun lang po. Uh, maraming salamat muli. Happy New Year po sa ating lahat. Thank you uh, Dr. Kalara for uh... Uh, minding a very important uh, aspect of our association because it will not run without these resources. But you see how even with not so many resources, na, di ba, Dr. Kamagay, we are still able to fulfill our duties as members and as board of the association because of our mission that is in our hearts, which is to propagate historical research and the teaching, proper teaching of history amongst our people. We would now call for the very important part of this afternoon's program, the report of the president of the association. We would like to call again, Dr. Maria Luisa Camagay. Okay, thank you, Shao. Okay. <clears throat> The year uh, 2020 opened with the Taal volcano eruption in January, then followed soon after by the appearance of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China. Uh, the Philippines responded by declaring a lockdown on March 16, closing schools, commercial establishments, recreational facilities, and government offices. The planned international conference of the Philippine Historical Association to be held from April 27 to 29 in Cebu City was canceled. In May, Shao Chua, PRO of the PHA, took the initiative to check how the, each member of the board was faring via Zoom. I personally would like to thank Shao for this effort since we were able to see each other through this new technology. Zoom became the lifeline and mainstay of PHA Meetings were held via Zoom, and most importantly, the planned international conference earlier canceled took place via Zoom. In June 2020, PHA, in collaboration with the Commission on Human Rights, held, it, held its annual independence colloquium focused on human rights violation during martial law. This colloquium coincided with the debates on the anti-terror bill which eventually became a law. Shao Chua was the point person for this activity. The year 2020 marked the 65th anniversary of PHA. To celebrate the event, an evening program was held again via Zoom. Two past presidents, namely Dr. Emmanuel Calairo and Dr. Evelyn Sonko, reminisced how PHA figured in their professional life. Joining us from overseas was Dr. Reynaldo Eleto, who recalled the post-war context of the establishment of the PHA. So enlightening was his brief history of PHA that PHA decided to confer on him honorary membership. So uh, another highlight of the 65th anniversary of the PHA was a PHA hymn composed by national artist uh, music for music, Sapiano Ryan Kayapya. In one meeting of the board, it was decided to push through with the international conference earlier scheduled April 27 to 29, 2020. Convener of this international conference was Dr. Fernando Santiago, vice president of the PHA 
and director of the Southeast Asian Research and Hub of De La Salle University. This conference was held on October 29 to 31, 2020. It also served as the seventh conference of the International Council for Historical and Cultural Cooperation Southeast Asia, which is a consortium of the Philippine Historical Association, the Persantuan Sejera, Sejara, Malaysia or PSM, and the uh, Mas, Masaya, Masyarakat Sejawarawan Indonesia or MSI. The conference was a success in terms of the bountiful harvest of papers read by international and local scholars, as well as the wide reach of the conference. Thanks to the online platform, the holding of the virtual conference proved that PHA can beat the COVID pandemic. December is the time when PHA holds its annual seminar workshop on the teaching of the Rizal course. A webinar took place last December 11, 2020, which was co-hosted by MSU, IIT, and the NHCP. The theme of the webinar was Looking Back, Moving Forward, Rizal, Mindanao, and COVID-19. That was what, quite a, um, a feat, no? As uh, uh, messages were given by uh, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Calairo, board member to NHCP, uh, Dr. Rene Escalante, uh, chair of the NHCP. Two members of the Department of History of MSU IIT, Professor Ray Luis Montes Claros and Professor, Professor Archil Daug were speakers. Uh, Professor Montes Claros discussed why the Pitan became the place of exile for Jose Rizal while Professor Daug explained the concept of end time and how it applied to results time in the present COVID-19 pandemic. PHA faced trying times this year, but was unbound. It looks forward to the celebration of the quincentennial of the circumnavigation of the world come 2021 and be one with the world in this great event. PHA is ready to unfurl its sails as it navigates a new tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for reminding us that despite the many difficulties of this year, one of the most difficult in our time, in our epoch, uh, it was not that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still napakarami nating gains na dapat ipagpasalamat uh, sa taon na ito. Uh, meron akong tanong, uh, Mr. Balsamo, before we continue with our uh, uh, meeting. Uh, are we ready to do the uh, screenshot? Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, we have four panels. So kapag ka, uh, nagsabi si Jonathan, isushoot niya yung four panels na ito, you have to smile. Everyone should smile because we really do not know in what panel are we included. Okay. So, para ito yung may post natin sa ating uh, uh, Facebook. So, sige, Mr. Balsamo, just count uh, uh, four times. Uh, four may, mga, lang may, may mga, ayan, ayan. Okay. Yan. So, okay. please open your cameras. Okay. So, one, two, three, panel one. Smile. <laughs> panel two. Uh, okay, panel two. Panel three. Sorry, marami po tayo eh. Uh, isa pa po. Last. Wow. Okay, thank you. Jonathan, please check kung may problema. Para kung may problema, mamaya maulit natin. Marami pong salamat sa pagbubukas ninyo ng inyong camera. Hello, uh, everyone. Okay, sige. Uh, ngayon, this is a very important part of our meeting, which is a motion which will be made by... Uh, it's good that we have a lawyer as a board member and a trustee in our association uh, straight from vacation somewhere in the Philippines. 
I would like to call a board member trustee of the Philippine Histori Historical Association will uh, move on the proposed motion regarding the election of board of directors for 2020 to 2022. Please welcome Attorney Teodoro Kalau the fourth. Salamat Chao and welcome. Uh, I, uh, magandang hapon ho sa lahat. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for this uh, wow record uh, general assembly. Um, I've been asked by the Board of Trustees to present a motion. I'll provide lang a background on uh, the motion itself. Every term, we have a turnover of one to three trustees during the General Assembly. Uh, that's usually the case because uh, may, may have a vacant na, na office. Uh, but that assumes a on-site General Assembly, which clearly we cannot do this year. So after we went through the different... Uh, uh, possibilities of uh, trying to push for an election, we realize na baka mahirapan tayo. And uh, this is in light of the fact that this is the first time that we will have our first on-site assembly. So during the last trustees meeting, it was suggested that we take a poll as to which, uh, if there were any trustees who would have a problem uh, continuing their, their service. And uh, much to the uh, uh, happy surprise of our president, Dr. Kamagay, all of the trustees naman were happy to extend their services. So in light of the fact that we have, this is our first on-site, uh, I'm sorry, on online General Assembly, it was felt to expedite matters that we simply provide a motion to nominate all the incumbent trustees uh, to fill out the next uh, term so that we would expedite uh, our election process this year. So with that, in that light, as uh, the trustee uh, volunteered to do this, I hereby respectfully move that all incumbent trustees of uh, this term be automatically nominated and deemed elected for the next succeeding term uh, of uh, this association. Thank you. Ciao. Uh, Todoro Kalau, having moved the said motion, I would like to second the motion. Is there any objection from the body? Having none, I guess the motion is adopted. Dr. Kamagay. I think Mr. Absin is raising his hand. Unmute, sir, Absin. I, I, I think he is clapping. Uh, sir, naka-mute, unmute, unmute nyo kayo, unmute kayo. By the way, thank you, Mr. Desus, for seconding also with me. Okay, uh, Mr. Balsamo, I would just like to uh, give uh, a floor to some questions. Yes. Uh, Rowena Del Rosario, I think, is probably a new member of our association. Do we have, uh, ang PHA ba may mga research agenda or priorities? Uh, what can you say about this? Uh, okay. Actually, uh, pwedeng magkaroon ng uh, research agenda ang, ang PHA. Um, in the past, um, um, ang research nila ay directed sa publication. So halimbawa, um, dati nung time ni Professor, ni Colonel Cesar Pobre, at ni Professor Evangelista, ang, ang naging age, research agenda ng PHA ay yung uh, magiging liburong Philippine Presidents, no? And then naging uh, Philippine Legislature, no? Um, nagkaroon ng third agenda sa, Philippine, sa history ng Philippine Judiciary, kaya lang um, hindi na nag-take off dahil sa funds, no? So, I mean, may, may research agenda dahil sa, um, it was uh, um, a priority of the board. It was a decision of the board. Yung mga sumunod na terms, um, hindi na nagkaroon ng malinaw na um, research agenda kasi hindi na siya directed towards uh, na spe specific project. No? Um, pero um, I think uh, the board is, is open no? Um to suggestions kung ano yung pwedeng maging research agenda. Uh, kasi we have to also consider na um, pag-research ay kailangan ng funding. no? 
So either um, i-commission ang PHA. Halimbawa, noong time ni President Marcos, yun yung maalala ko, no? uh, PHA was commissioned to conduct a research no? on the state of the teaching of history. Uh, um, unfortunately, we do not have a copy of the report no? of the research. No? Nabanggit lang na um, natatapos yung research at uh, it was submitted to Malacanang. No? Unfortunately, Uh, wala nga lang tayong kopya. No? So, isa yun sa mga posible na reason kung bakit mag, pwede mag-adapt ang board ng specific research agenda sa, sa term ng bawat board. Um, pero sa ngayon, um, in the recent years, um, wala tayong um, specific um, research agenda kasi ang naging focus ng, ng previous board at hanggang sa ngayon ay yung ating consortium, yung ating networking with uh, Indonesia and Malaysian historical societies. So more on, ang naging focus ay um, um, expansion ng, ng, ng uh, uh, relationship or contact sa, sa Southeast Asia. Pero um, it's a good idea na pwede pag-usapan sa board. No? I think may masasabi din si Ma'am Kamagay na kung, kung pwede ang PHA may magkaroon ng research priority or research agenda. Um, if, if I can also add siguro, kasi may mga nagtatanong din sa akin dito in a direct message, uh, kung paano nga ba, uh, ano nga ba yung support na binibigay ng PHA sa mga members nito? No? Of course, uh, sa totoo lang, uh, siyempre magaminan naman tayo dito, hindi yung pera yung support na yun. No? Uh, hindi, hindi, yan isa, hindi yan yung ating nagagawa. Pero I think that uh, the platform, the real platform of uh, assistance na binibigay ng PHA aside from the membership side, which is of course, uh, kaso hindi naman lang naman yun ang dahilan eh. I think kung bakit tayo nagme-member para lang promote. Hindi naman siguro yun lang. But really, the uh, the fellowship that we have with each other, especially during the conferences, yung malaki ang role ng international at national conferences natin kasi dyan po tayo nakakapag-network with other historians. And when we present our papers there, di ba, there's a platform that is bigger than all of us, bigger than whoever, di ba? It's a Philippine Historical it's the Association that people listen to the association, the teachers go to this association for the new researches that will come from all of us. Uh, dito na nagsisimula na, of course, that when you are becoming known in the field because of the research that you have done that are publicized in the conferences of the PHA, then people will go to you. And people you know, will come to you, will also uh, consult you, and you can also consult your network now, which is the association. So you can, you can, you can contact Dr. Kamagay, you can contact Dr. Kalara, you can contact Dr. Uh, Atorni Kalaw, and whoever it is who are here. I think yun ang talagang nakikita natin. More than, more, uh, talagang, of course, yung, yung financial, hindi naman talaga tayo dyan. But even without it, without that much finances, we are still able to buy, bind ourselves together in common love for the discipline and the teaching of history to further develop it together. Walang iwanan. Walang expert-expert. I mean, yung expert lang ang sumusuloy. Hindi. Hindi na yun ang association ngayon. Ang association ngayon ay kami, kayo, tayong lahat. And I think that is what uh, binds us all together. Kaya... Please, the new members, thank you so much for being members of this association, for your for signifying your, your, your wanting to help. And also, itong ginagawa natin ngayon, simula lang ito. You can uh, be active by putting forward your researches in the next conference call, uh, call, call for papers of the conferences. You can ask us no, uh, kung ano, uh, personally, ano ang pwedeng mga networking na pwede natin gawin with other experts sa mga topics na inyong gustong i-pursue. Pwede po natin na, yan, pagtulungan yan. Libre po yan. At pwede po, yan, ang, yan ang, ang pamilya natin. Yan yung PHA Milia. Pamilya. Uh, I hope uh, tama yung sagot ko, uh, Ma'am Kamagay, at sa lahat ng board natin. <laughs> I I uh, I share your thoughts, uh, Shao. Uh, of course, we there's no money in PHA. As you see, the Arlene gave us a report how much money. So if you're thinking of uh, research funding, we cannot provide that. But we can provide you other things. 
expertise no uh, among uh, uh, historians um, we can also provide you the venue for you to uh, um, read papers you know in the recent uh, international conference I was so happy and so elated that uh, history is not going to die because the readers were young they were young uh, historians young scholars so it really inspired me na, okay uh, my generation can disappear but uh, uh, you know we are sure that there are new uh, historians who will take our place so so please um, uh, uh, when you read your papers and this is one thing I had been trying to push is that if you read your papers, we try to make those papers into journal articles, no? And um, publications. Yeah, your publication and the historical bulletin is a refereed journal, so you can cite that your article appeared in the historical bulletin because it's a refereed journal. Huh? So I encourage those who uh, uh, have papers. You know, the reason why we don't have. Um, Usually when you have journals, there's a theme, but it's so difficult to really, the reality is too difficult to solicit articles when you have a theme. So what we do and what I do now as editor, I take a look at the papers read in the conference, whether international or national, and then invite the paper reader. Would you like to uh, transform your paper into a journal article? So th that's a venue, no? Uh, read the papers in our conferences, have that paper uh, published in a refereed journal. I think that's a big help and push already. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamagay. Before, the, before we go to our final uh, part, uh, yan, uh, uh, Dr. Kalairo. Uh, well, uh, maganda hapon po. Gusto ko lang mag-comment sa research agenda. No? Uh, nabanggit na rin ni uh, Sir uh, Jonathan Balsamo yung uh, International Council. I think uh, since the establishment of the Council, ay, uh, it's a continuing agenda uh, uh, yung uh, research about the collaboration of Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Kasi even today, uh, bihirang-bihira yung mga nag-aaral tungkol doon. So aside from the sa ano, yung sasabi ni uh, Mr. Balsamo na ng mga themes, no, ng mga researches natin. Um, puma, nung naitatag yung International Council, karoon ka ng continuing uh, research on collaboration. No? Uh, pero yun nga, ay, uh, kasi nga hindi naman to taon-taon, no? uh, kasi na talagang napakahirap mag-research no? ng isang international coll collab. No? But I think uh, pag merong mga call for, uh, for International Council uh, Conference, ay hinahanap talaga yung link no yung mga link kaya i think it will be a uh, continuing uh, agenda for uh, for our organization thank you mr shaw salamat po uh, dr kalairo jonathan bago kita tawagin ano sinasabi ni ginong herald giwa dito na uh, uh, ng uplb at lhcn na uh, local historical committees network Inform ko rin po kayo na member ng Publication and Production Subcommittee ng LHCN ang PHA. May regular journal po ang NHCP at uh, pwede rin po sana na uh, i-endorse, nating endorse sa mga kasapi bilang commitment ng PHA and LHCN. Yeah. So, so binanggit ko yan at pwede ho pag-usapan pa yan uh, dahil marami, meron tayong members din na member ng LHCN. Uh, Professor, oh, uh, yun yung isang halimbawa siya nung gusto kong sabihin. So sa mga members no isa sa mga pwedeng um bibigay ng ng samahan sa inyo ay halimbawa um halimbawa yung uh, Center for Palaw Palawan Studies no ng sa Palawan um majority sa kanila ay member natin of course Professor Evangelista si Mike Doblado so noong sila ay nagsisik ng membership sa PSSC nag-apply ng membership sa PSSC isa ang PHA sa nagbigay ng endorsement no so may mga cases din tayo before na may mga members tayo na nag-apply ng research, ng grant um, na ang isa sa mga requirement ay recommendation. So 
nagpapasa sila sa atin, naghihingi na kung pwede silang i-endorse ng PHA. And upon evaluation of yung kanilang papers, ay naibibigay ng, ganun, ng PHA yung ganong endorsement sa ating mga members. So yung mga malilit na bagay na tulad nun ay nakakatulong para um, uh, makatulong din sa ating member. Ako personally, um, nung nag apply ako kay Sir Manny Calairo, nung siya ay din sa Lasal Dasma, <laughs> isa sa mga recommendation ko ay from PHA. No, at that time, the president was Dr. Bongkan. So, mm. syempre mag-apply ka, kailangan ng mga recommendations. No? At that time, I was the youngest PRO. So, Dr. Bongkan, um, as president of PHA, no, gave me a recommendation letter for Dr. Kalairo. Para uh, part ng requirement no, uh, as applicant, as uh, instructor sa, sa Lasal Dasma. I mean, mga malilit na bagay na pwedeng ibigay naman ng association Um, dahil nasa iisang may, may, nasa, nasa, iisa, nasa iisang larangan naman po tayo. So, pero syempre, yung mga ganung bagay ay mga galing mismo rin sa atin. Kasi yung um, pag yung association naman, hindi naman niyan yung officers lang, pero ang strength talaga niyan ay sa members. Kaya so I think itong part na ito, importante ito kasi parang naging members hour na rin ito, no? Um, may nag-message sa akin din, no? Uh, nagtatanong ng scholarship, may binibigay ba daw na scholarship ang PHA sa mga outstanding or na magagaling na mga estudyante, no? Uh, to be honest, wala tayo ngayon dahil wala tayong pondo, no? Pero po, syempre, um, eventually in the future, no? Um, kung magkakaroon tayo ng mga ideas para talaga mag-raise ng funds, magkaroon ng enough funds ang PHA, makahanap ng mga benefactors. Tulad naman ng ginagawa ng ibang samahan, ano, halimbawa ng American Historical Association, no, pag tinignan mo yung profile nila, marami silang mga prizes, marami silang mga grants no, na kung saan yung mga members nag apply Siyempre pa nag apply sila, meron silang um, masasabi naman natin na Uh, na na basis kumbaga halimbawa meron talaga silang napakagandang research meron silang napakagandang naisulat na article no na um, kailangan ng additional funds no o kaya napakagaling na teacher no may mga ganung prizes uh, pwede siguro gawin niyo ng PHA in the future no na mag-raise ng funds maghanap ng benefactors para mag-come up ng mga prizes na magsisilbing incentive or a form of recognition sa mga magagaling na research, magagandang research, magagaling na researcher, uh, magagaling na guro no to motivate no uh, history teachers uh, as a for as a reward no as a uh, affirmation eventually no pero lahat po ng ito ay mangyayari kung meron tayong resources no na talagang uh, di ba even naman sa katipunan pag tinignan natin yung documents nila, di ba? Meron silang accounting na pakahalaga ng pera. Kasi for any organization to run, kailangan ng pera, no? So, eventually siguro in the future, no, mas pag naging mas resourceful or mas mas may creative or baka pag lalo tayo yung lumaki, uh, mas lalo tayo na promote, may mga um uh, philanthropists na mag-o-offer ng um mag-share ng funds or resources sa PHA. Pero siyempre, uh, malalaman lang nila yon if we continue our good work. So pag, pag no, nakita na ang ating samahan ay uh, talagang samahan para sa stakeholders, not only for the officers, samahan na talaga nag-contribute sa larangan, uh, I, I think people will see and um, people will be there to give their support. So I'm just sharing the vision, hopefully, no? <laughs> Uh, so yes. that's the, actually a challenge not only for the officers but for, for the members as well. And also, gusto kong sabihin at i-recognize din, uh, this is my realization just now, no? kasi ang dami nagbe-message sa akin, ang dami suggestions actually. Um, yeah. um, I, I think um, the PHA is very open. You, you can email us of your suggestions, of your questions, of your proposals. Kasi kung yan naman ay maganda, makikita naman niya ng board, no? We, we can see ano talaga yung mga good ideas and we need that, no? Uh, hindi lang naman sa board nang gagaling ang mga magagandang ideas how to run the organization or how right. to make it better, no? Mahalaga nang galing din sa inyo. I, I just I share ko lang ito, no? Actually, sabi nga ni Shao, dati ang PHA ay ho Philippine Home for the Aged, no? Kasi karamihan talaga matatanda. So, um, I think the chair Chairman was the NHI chairman then was Sir Ambet Ocampo. So sinabihan niya ta ang PHA 
uh, one comment. Actually, may nag-email na sinabi nga, bakit puro matatanda ang sa PHA? Puro, di ba? Sila, sila at sila lang, no? Even sa mga speakers o conferences, umiikot lang sa kanika nila lagi, no? I mean, to be honest, no? Yun yung uh, feedback, no? So, pinag-usapan yun ng board. And, um, to be, uh, ano, ano, ano rin, no? Um, to the credit of the board at that time, no? During the time of Dr. Bongkan, they realize, I think they realized that uh, that comment was valid, no? Uh, so that opened um, the opportunity for the young people to come into PHA. No, so um, I was um, recruited. I I was recruited. Actually, I was asked no to join the board at that time as I was 21. Uh, I was the fresh graduate to join the board. Uh, parang para magkaroon daw ng young blood. Then eventually, uh, pumasok si Shao. No, at, at iba pa. So nakatutuwa kasi yung dynamics natin, may senior, no, may mga junior, uh, may into academ, I'm, I'm with the local government, no, meron tayong lawyer. So napaka-diverse, ang ganda ng pinagagalingan ng idea and I think that's uh, uh, beneficial to the organization. So I'm, I just would like to share that. Thank you, Jonathan. Ano, um, bago tayo pumunta sa announcements and then Dr. Kamagay's part, um, gusto ko lang sabihin na there are people here who are actually are officers of uh, local historical committees and tourism uh, uh, and cultural affairs office of their towns. And there, uh, ang sinasabi ko nga dito, oh, we will be forthright with you. Eh. If you if you text us or message us, we will be forthright with you what we can and we cannot do. But uh, as you see here, and daming rich experiences that Dr. Kamagay uh, will 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 help you. You know, uh, if you have archival, you know, questions about the archives and Wesley Reyes, for example, a local historian, mga local histories, and Jonathan Balsamo when it comes to uh, tourism management and all of that. No, there, there are things that you can actually take uh, consult with the uh, members of the association and a lot of us diba? if you want to know uh, if you want to network with southeast asian historians you can uh, ask dr Fernie santiago and and the, most of the board hindi ko nababanggitin lahat and of course i would like to drum up uh, to the members of the association that we also have ian alfonso who is as part of the secretariat uh, coordinator of the Secretariat of the National Quincentennial Committee. And please, ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate in our schools the Quincentennial, the 500 years of victory at Mactan, victory and humanity. So I hope that uh, our members here would listen. And uh, we, we talked about it in our national conference, international conference, and I hope that you will uh, cascade the essence of the celebration to your uh, localities. Okay, so Doc, uh, Mr. Balsamo, I think you have some people to thank and I think you also have to announce as PRO of the association, although ang gumawa talaga dito yung ating kasama na si Gloria Melencio and her husband, the PHA Balita. So what is your announcement about the PSA ah, Balita, Mr. Secretary? Yeah, okay, yung PHA Balita, i-email na lang sa kanila, Shao. No? Ah, email, okay. Ah, email so uh, we would email. It's a very special issue for the year of the pandemic. It's uh, like our year end. Um, napakaganda, nakaipon po lahat ng mga naging activities natin in brief. And it's a very comprehensive report of the association to our nation, uh, what we have done. Um, okay, so we would like to now call uh, for uh, a very important uh, part of the session the closing remarks and launching of historical bulletin 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, the editor-in-chief of the historical bulletin, our president, Dr. Maria Luisa Kamagay. Thank you, Shao. Okay, so uh, our historical bulletin 2020. Uh, contains uh, papers which were read. So this this is what I was saying. These are papers read, but they can be articles. Uh, they can be transformed into journal articles. And um, the um, conference at that time was focused on public history. And of course, uh, uh, our lead person here when it comes to public history is Shao. He is the public history personified. 
He is the embodiment of public history. Thank so you. Uh, he was the keynote, one of the keynote speakers. Ambet was there. Uh, Maris Dokno was there. Uh, uh, but, and then, of course, Chow. So his uh, paper, which uh, was transformed into an article, gets to be included in the historical bulletin. Then now uh, we also have a paper by Ian Alfonso, uh, wherein he narrates um, Project Sai Sai. He is the father of Project Sai Sai, and he gives a narrative of how it was uh, conceived and uh, how it is now. No, it's a continuing project. Um, then the third article there is Walking into History which is the uh, museums of the NHCP. Uh, uh, and uh, this is, you know, uh, it's very interesting because the two authors, Ian Alfonso and Euphemia Agbayani are mem researchers of the NHCP. So they're giving, you know, a firsthand account in a sense of what they're doing. So uh, that's the third. Uh, then the fourth article, uh, very interesting as well. I hope you get to read it. Uh, Kasaysay ng Pilipinas sa bagong curriculum at elementarya at tertiary, no? Isang pagsusuri. So it compares um, how the K to 12 has affected the teaching of Philippine history in the high school level. So the next encounter of students on Philippine history will be in the college level. No? Uh, so in the elementary, it's grades five and six, and then uh, no Philippine history in the uh, senior year, do, uh, high school level, and uh, they, they, they meet again during the uh, tertiary education no, in college. Then the, uh, uh, the next article here is by uh, uh, Arlie Rose de la Cruz, um, where he shares Dean Worcester's battle against animal contagion in the Philippines. Very interesting uh, as well, no? uh, because uh, the gist of the article is that um, the Americans uh, battle against um, uh, animal contagion in the Philippines, the, for example, the reindeer pest uh, did not um, address the cultural value of the carabao. You know, when uh, the Americans started uh, giving them serum, which did not work, or quarantining the carabaos, removing them from the owners, uh, separating them from the owners, rather, uh, it really became a cultural battle instead of just a scientific battle. Uh, race, gender, and photography. This is by Mary Dorothy Jose. Uh, this is... Uh, takes a look at the images of Filipino women in the 1904 St. Louis Exposition. Uh, this is an award-winning essay, uh, uh, won the first prize in the um, uh, Benitez writing. Uh, uh, I, I think this was sponsored by Aliu, the Ateneo uh, Library of Women uh, Writings. The last one is, of course, by our trustee, member of our trustee, Teodoro Calo IV, on the role of Freemasonry and how he, uh, in this particular article, he tries to uh, uh, take a look at where the demonization of Freemasonry is coming from uh, uh, and uh, how it can be uh, resolved. You know? So uh, those are the articles we have. These are all peer reviewed. These were sent to uh, reviewers. And the writers had to um, uh, you know, address the comments and suggestions of the reviewers. So we're very proud that the historical bulletin is a peer reviewed journal. Thank you. Any additional announcements, uh, Mr. Balsamo, our secretary, to other members of the board? Uh, so before Dr. Kamagay gives her close, clo uh, gives her closing remarks, <laughs> um, 
Kala ni mom, tapos na siya. Overexposed. <laughs> Overexposed. <laughs> I'm so overexposed. <laughs> okay. Um so uh, gusto ko lang pong banggitin no at least for the information of the members no. Um um yung atin po we are planning to actually um uh, revitalize no uh, our website no. Um at the same time kasi talagang lahat ngayon online na no. So hopefully by by next year first quarter maayos natin yung website natin. Um we're in Um, we will make um, the previous um, uh, issues of historical bulletin available, no? Um, para maging ano rin siya, no? Resource website. Um, and then also we are planning. The board is planning to uh, digitize, no? All the previous copies of historical bulletin from Volume One, Number One, 1957. Um, We are um, in the process of um, collecting all the copies, all the issues, and once completed, um, we will go into um, uh, digitization. And then, then once digitized, um, to partner with a platform where it can be accessed by the public. No, so sa ngayon po ang mapapangako namin yung mga I think the last five issues meron tayong soft copy. Pwede nating i-upload sa website ng PHA. Kasi hindi naman talaga revenue generate, hindi naman talaga revenue generation ng objective ng ating bulletin but to share um, historical research no. Um, so hopefully by by the first quarter. And then yung digitization um, hopefully by by next year. So yun po yung medyo ano ma'am no na pag-usapan natin sa board. And I think that's a good news no uh, for for the members. Um Ano pa ba ang d- dapat nilang malaman siya oh. <laughs> yung ano sino yung pasasalamatan natin ah, okay. for the layout of ah, okay. the Okay, yung pala um we, we would like to acknowledge pala lahat ng tumulong ma'am sa historical bulletin. Um of course, ang ating um napakasipag na editor in chief no. Matagal na proseso ito ma'am no, almost oh. ong taon no. Madugo yung pagpapadala sa reviewers. Of course, Hindi, ma'am, hindi pwedeng sabihin yung mga reviewers, no? Awag, oh, ma'am. Blind, uh, blind. Oh, blind, oo. Oh. Pero yun po, no, gusto namin sabihin na yung mga reviewers po natin, ano po yun, ma'am, no? Libre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ano lang, um, hindi, lang sila, hindi sila makahindi kay ma'am Kamagay. <laughs> oh, pero talagang trabaho rin po kasi babasahin mo yung papel, mag-iisip ka. So it's also really work, no? And we would like to, sino man sila, no, we would like to thank them. So, from the reviewers to the layout artist, we would like to acknowledge Mr. Hernan Melencio and Ms. Ma'am Gloria Melencio. No? Uh, sila po yung nag-layout ng ating bulletin at, at ng ating PHA balita. And then, um, ayun po. Yun. Sa mga announcement po ng PHA activities, no? Um, from time to time po, we ask you to visit our Facebook page. No? Kasi minsan po may mga libreng seminar, no, either webinar man 'yan or minsan po may mga activities po ang Philippine Social Science Council, PSSC, um, na pinapadala sa PHA. So, ina-announce po natin 'yon sa ating web- blog sa ngayon kasi mas madaling mag-update ng blog ng, ng, ng PHA Facebook, no, kaysa sa website. And then um, also, um, ang NCCA po ay sa mga naghahanap po ng pondo, no. Ang NCCA ay usually meron po silang grant pero you have to apply. So you have to know the you must know you must study the process para makapag-apply kayo kapag may mga grants kasi meron pong Young Historians Prize no. Uh, pag meron talaga kayong magandang research na sa tingin ninyo ay um, contribution, mag- malaking contribution, pwede ninyong i-submit doon. Kaya usually kaya lang po usually may mga deadlines po ito. So ang head po ng atin ng National Committee on Historical Research ng NCCA ay taga PHC po na banggit na si Dr. Kalairo. So at the same time po, uh, meron ding Local Historical Committees Network no, LHCN. So ang LHCN ay uh, nakakabit sa NHCP. So uh, I, I think yung mga inyong yung sa mga members po natin na baka iba hindi pa nila alam yung LHCN, no? Um Um, ano po yan, no? marami rin mga programs, projects pagating sa local history. At pagating po sa resources, baka makatulong no? uh, tulad ng PHA. 
So, Shao, Shao, yun na lang mababanggit ko. Meron pa ba? Uh, Jonathan, uh, basahin mo yung chat mo. Ah. Pero meron akong, ano, meron akong tanong sa'yo. Hindi pa natin na-announce sa uh, uh, General Assembly na actually nagtaas tayo ng membership fees. Ah, oh, oh, yes. So, swerte kayong mga member na ngayon. <laughs> oh, oh. Mm -mm. Hindi, hindi ko na, ano, hindi ko makakita. Yung chat. Hindi, wala naman. Uh, reminder lang yan for okay. what I'm going to do in the end. Uh, ah, okay. Sige. Naka-screen share ka pa, ha? Warning lang. Oo, oh, <laughs> hindi ko maano. <laughs> hindi ko ma-stop. Stop. Ayun. 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 <laughs> uh, tatawagin na natin uh, to, for a closing uh, remark, Dr. Kamagay. Ay, sabi ko nga masyado overexposed. But anyway, uh, in behalf of the board uh, of PHA, uh, welcome for, uh, to the PHA for those who are uh, lifetime members and also annual members. Um, I would like you to remember that um, the founding date of 1955 of PHA is um, very memorable. No? And um, we are 65. I'm 65 kasi retirable age na. No? But PHA is not going to retire. It's given a new set of tires no? uh, for the next uh, uh, 50 years pa. Uh, as uh, Shao said, uh, we should move forward. We should not be defeated by the COVID and we should be more optimistic of uh, our country and the discipline of history. I want the young, I'm not, I'm not uh, AGSM now, but I want the young to be involved you know, uh, by uh, participating in the conferences and uh, being member of, because PHA, it's like, uh, I don't like to say that it's a Pandora box, but there's so much that it can offer. No, It's just awaiting you to knock at our doors. Um, in fact, I remember that uh, there are training seminars for teachers. Then there's a pending um, a project on local history. So um, uh, we can give you uh, seminar workshops on how to write local history. Yeah. Uh, we have done uh, a seminar workshop on how to convert your paper into a uh, journal article. So we're open to that. If we can be of help, no, uh, that's the help we can give you, not monetary or financial, but in terms of the skills that, uh, uh, or even the knowledge that we can share. So uh, welcome and we look forward to a better 2021 for all of us and for the association. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kamagay. Uh, before we close, we would like to um, do something which is also a tradition of the Philippine Historical Association in its events. Uh, let us sing together uh, our favorite so patriotic song, Pilipinas Kung Mahal. Ang bayan ko'y 
Maraming salamat po. Makasaysayang araw ni Gat Dr. Jose Rizal. Mabuhay ang kapisanang pangkasaysayan ng Pilipinas. Pamana natin mula sa mga ninunong historyador. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Maginawang 2021. Happy New Year po. Thank you. Salamat po. Happy New Year po. Happy New Year. Maraming salamat. Bye-bye po. Salamat po. Happy New Year. Sa susunod, yung anthem na natin yung kakantay natin. Oo, dapat. Dapat siya. Salamat siya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. God bless us all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all. Salamat po. Bye. Paalam. Ano siya? <laughs> End meeting. Ano? End meeting. <laughs> Hintayin natin sila. Oh. <laughs> oh, tumigil na. Si John Ray. <laughs> Wala. End meeting. <laughs> ano? Uusap tayo sa ano? Sa chat. Oh, Tapos nga ako mag-type eh. <laughs> Tawag na lang sa messenger. Ano? Hindi si John Ray, wala na. Wala na talaga sila. Okay. Uh, sige. Ay, si John Ray, oh. Di pa ako. Oh, may sila na message. Saan? Salamat po sa pagpunta. Ikaw, ay, wala, ikaw ang host. Ikaw mag-end meeting. Ako palang mag-end meeting. Oo. Tanji eh. <laughs> End.